Zena, Warthog Princess, and welcome to another Stephanie Dawn haul video. Before we get into the items that I got, I just want to share some more information about Stephanie Dawn. First thing is they do now have their own URL for YouTube, so if you want to find it, just look up Stephanie Dawn handbags and you can find their videos on YouTube. You also can go to stephaniedawn.net and you can find their videos via link from their main site, which is where you shop anyways. So while you're there, you can find your way around. Um, they do also, as you order, they send out a little brochure, if you will, that has all of their design styles that they have available. And it also shows you what patterns are current. What it doesn't show you is the retired patterns. So if you are interested in a pattern that you know was Stephanie Dawn, you might still be able to get it because they do have two ways. One is they have their pop-up shop, which I don't know if there's a set interval, it's open now, but you can, at the pop-up shop, you can get retired styles and um, colors. So that's good. Now, one thing to note, because it took me a while to figure out the difference between a pop-up shop and an online outlet sale, the pop-up shop is regular prices, but you can reach back to some retired items um, and then the online outlet sale, that's all of the items, current and retired, and they're at sale prices. So that's kind of the difference, at least as far as I figured it out. So I think I've cracked the nut on that. Um, but they are all available on the stephaniedon.net. Um, the online outlet sale, they're between March and October, they're going to do one week per month that that sale is going to be open. And... Unlike Vera, they are publishing in advance the dates. So the last one was in March, uh, I think it was, let me see, I wrote it down, March 15th to 21st, which is what I bought these items from that sale. And the next one is gonna be April 19th to the 25th. And if you want reminders about those, or if you want information in general, they have you know the email list like any company does, and if you're on that list, you can get a sneak peek at the sale starting the weekend prior. So in this case, that would be, um, let's see, it starts out on the 15th, or sorry, the 19th, I mean. So whatever that weekend prior, you would get an email that gives you a sneak peek of what's going to be in the sale. So you can kind of see what inventory is remaining. Um, otherwise, if you're not signed up, you still will get the information if you just go to stephaniedon.net and you can see it there. And that will be available starting on Monday, April 19th, the first day of the sale at 11 a.m. I don't know for sure, but I think that might be Eastern time, just FYI. Um, all right, as far as the online outlet sale, what's the deal? So first of all, you get all access to the retired items and sale prices. That's two great things right there, of course. And that's the same thing with like Vera Bradley as well. Um, but they also offer free shipping, ground shipping. You get a chance to win the $20 giveaway. So every order that you make is another entry for that. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. The other thing, and I'm looking at my notes because I don't want to miss any of these details to share. Um, they also are going to do a Facebook Live. You'll get to see Ty, the marketing manager herself. And she'll be sharing some information and probably some products if, if history repeats itself. And you can find her on Facebook Live Tuesday, April 20th at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, um, which will be during that week of the sale as well. So I'm guessing that she'll be sharing something that's going to be highlighted during that sale. Um, so there you go. That's that. And uh, when you order, you also get this little pamphlet that they send along with every order. And it shows you some important things. Now, you can find all of this on the website as well. You don't have to wait to have ordered something. But it gives you just a one-stop shop to see all the different styles that are available to you. It doesn't tell you the patterns they're all available in. So inventory-wise, they may or may not be available in the pattern you desire. But on that pamphlet, it also does show you their current pattern selection, or colors as they call them. And it does not show you the retired ones. So, you know, the only way really to see that is during the pop-up shops or the online outlet sales, or if you live near a store that sells Stephanie Dawn. They do have a store locator on their website. Um, unfortunately, their 
few and far between, so you kind of have to bop around and, um, yeah, so there's none near me within 500 miles according to the site. I think that's probably true, so. But there is one near nearer within a few hours of my place in Virginia, so I may make a truck out there and find it. But anyway, okay, so that is the style guide that comes with your order, and I just keep it handy for future reference. Let's look at some of the things that I got. Because I bought it during the online outlet sale, one, I got great prices. Two, I also was able to reach back to older colors. So I've got a shoulder bag in Jovi pattern. I just think it's, it's lovely, it's bright colors. And I don't tend to be a super big fan of greens, um, or reds for that matter, but it's just such a pretty print and it has greens and yellows and orange and red and purple. Uh, but it's bright and happy. It's jovial. I don't know if that's where the name Jovi comes from. Probably not, but it certainly makes sense to me. But I do love this particular style of bag. It's very much up my alley. It's a shoulder bag or crossbody. The strap is nice and wide. It's very, very comfortable. And it's multi layers of fabric with some facing in between. But it's not stiff. You know, it's very pliable, but it's got some structure to it. And it comes packed all nicely tucked in the bag, which is great. I do use that, um, as I've mentioned before with like Vera, I use those clues of how it comes to me as to clues to how I store it, um, because then that, you know, kind of makes sense. Um, in this case, I tuck the strap in and then I, because it has a structured bottom, I just fold it up the back. And if I want to lay it flat, that gives me more storage space. Preferably though, if I have a structured bag with a structured bottom, I do try to not have to fold it because that creates a crease that then you have to work out later. I mean, it's, it's not unrecoverable or anything like that. It's not gonna do permanent damage, but you just have to retrain the fabric and that's kind of a pain sometimes, but anyway. So that has nothing to do with where I bought it from. That's just personal technique for storage. All right, but the strap itself is where we were talking about. It is fully adjustable. It does have metal fittings on there, and it has the loop on the other end. The one end is just sewn straight on. So if, you like, if you're like me and you like to clip things on your bag, sometimes like a bag charm, a hand sanitizer, a coin purse, whatever, then you can clip it onto this ring here. It's a little farther up the chain, but it works. You also, if you have a big ring on it or, or some way to clip it, you can clip it through that fabric. Um, but you can only do that on the one end, so it kind of limits your option. If you put it around the whole strap, well then you can put it on either end, which is great and, and fine. But then if I do it like that and you put your strap down, if it's a big loop, it'll just, yeah, I find that annoying. That's not a bag specific problem, definitely not. But that's just my preferences. So I do like to have a loop where it can be in a fixed location and not be sliding down the handle all the time. But. But this is a very generous strap. Let's see, I don't have to put it all the way out, but I like my bag to sit low. So let's just put it all the way to the end and see where it falls. If I put this on crossbody, I know it doesn't match my current outfit, but this to me is my perfect length. I just know that for me. So if you're a much bigger or taller and you prefer still a low hanging bag, then you might have to modify the strap. But Stephanie Dawn does sell their fabrics, so you might be able to get the actual fabric and and if you have some skills or know someone who can sew, they can help you out with that. The strap itself is generally not interchangeable because it is fixed sewn on, so it's not removable. All right, the bag itself, we have a nice zipper top closure. You have two slip pockets on the front, very generously sized. Um, let's see, I have my phone right here, which I would definitely put in one of these pockets. My phone is taller than the pocket, but I don't mind in this case, generally speaking, that it sticks out just a little bit. I'd rather have that convenience of quick grab, you know, right there on the side of my bag. So that's okay. Um, yeah, but I like the size of this bag. This is very much like the Vera Bradley on the go. Um, there are several lug styles that fit this same thing. It's a little taller and um, narrower in this direction for the GGB Hobo B. So the, a lot of my favorite bags are all roughly this general shape and size. It does have that bigger on the bottom, narrower at the top structure. And it also has just a slight tapering from bottom to top this way, ever so slight. It's more, more straight. But yeah, two pockets on the front. On the back, 
you have a nice big zipper all the way across. It's unorganized, I mean, not unorganized. It doesn't have any organization in the pocket, but it is nice quilted on um, the whole interior there. And that was a glimpse of that interior pattern, sort of that fish scale. It's almost like a tan neutral with a silver metallic on top which I, I kind of like it. I mean, it's different. I don't, I don't get that it necessarily directly correlates with the exterior, so it's not a coordinating interior pattern, um, but it is consistent. So if you get this, you're gonna get that, and that's fine. Um, but I like that it's light colored as well, so you can really see down inside there. And because they put the trim, you can see there's the two big slip pockets on that side, and those are even. And then on the opposite side, you have two slip pockets again, but you have a big one and a small one. So that's nice. And inside you get this little card that's got special care instructions. This Stephanie Dawn bag has a solid base. Please remove before washing. That's very important, but it's very easy to remove. And all it is is a piece of cardboard, but if you flip your bag inside out, and you really don't even have to go all the way, just put the one end, you can see where that bottom fabric on top, and you just slide that cardboard right out. Um, once you get the corners free, that is. So you can just slide that cardboard out and you can see, I mean, it's a pretty rigid piece of cardboard. It's not the end of the world if you forget and you wash it in the washer with that in there. It's gonna be a gooey mess to get that wet cardboard out, uh, but you can and then you'll have to rewash it probably because you got goop and you know cardboard stank on there and you don't want any of that. Um, so take it out before you put it in the washer, but they are washable completely, so there you go. Don't bleach them, don't use fabric softener, that kind of stuff. And definitely, I personally will either dry air dry only or hang them up to dry, but just make sure that you don't put them away wet and store them that way because you don't want mildew or anything like that to happen. But very washable and I love that about quilted cotton handbags. The zipper pulls on these are like Stephanie Dawn standard. They're a long stretch of fabric and they're, they're sewn edge, but then the end is not so if you want to finish that yourself, that's a, a good thing to do or put some fray stop or something on there. But they're long, so they're very forgiving in that regard and they're easy to grab for sure. The zippers themselves are, these look like Dunlap label on them. And they seem like good zippers, good zippers for sure. And that's it, okay. So let me put that tag back in there. That is the shoulder bag. Um, this is the medium size or regular size. There is a larger version, which looking at this, the crossbody cargo bag. And I do have one of those in the Mocha Paisley. It's quite a bit larger, kind of like the large on the go size. But anyways, okay, so that's Jovi. And I got the same bag also in the mosaic pattern. And this one is it's more of like browns that has these purples and a nice pretty... I want to say maroon. What is that red color? It's pretty though. I think it's nice and it's a geometric pattern, but it's very tasteful. So it's colorful, but subtle. I know that sounds ironic, but uh, yeah. And then the inside of this one is actually mosaic. It's interesting. It's a little bit dark, but not too bad because there's all those pops of white. So it does not feel like a dark cavernous cave actually. Um, but yeah, so same same structure and everything. It's just a different different color. So we got that. Oh, another difference on these two, just looking at them, the mosaic has a coordinating trim pattern, which I actually very much like. And the Jovi actually does not. It does have that trim there, but it is the same fabric and pattern material as the rest of it. So it doesn't stand out. I like that too, but I honestly have to say, I think I like the coordinating trim a little bit better. It just gives it some more personality. I mean, this is kind of a wild pattern anyways. Um, yeah, so that's that's my preference anyways. Okay, so slight differences. And then I also got the Zip ID and Key. It has dog hair on it because <laughs> Kelly. Um, okay, so I got Zip ID and Key in both patterns and the same is true here. Like you still have that stripe of fabric down the middle and in this case, it happens to fit nicely with where the pattern is laid out, so you almost can't even see that separate stripe there. It looks like it fits, right? But it's actually on top. You can kind of see where there's overlap there. And the other one, of course, you can see because it has a separate coordinating trim on the front. 
And those are just on the front. The back is just the same inside and out. So the Zip ID and key, if you're not familiar, is quite like the Zip ID case from Vera Bradley. It's slightly different though. Instead of having a, a ring, a fixed ring, it has the clip on there. And you can't remove the clip actually because this fabric strap, I mean, I guess you could, but you'd have to cut that and you don't wanna do that. And the zipper inside, it has the clear ID window and the separate side as well. So same, same sign. And then the last thing that I got is a mini sling in mosaic. And this, I think, ooh, I think I heard that this particular style is retiring. Like, so when this style is gone, it's gone. I don't think they're gonna continue it. It is a fun little size though. So if you um, like a minimalist bag, or you just like quick access, or for me, I got this for, yeah, for the light days where you just wanna be hands-free and have a few things with you. Or like when I'm traveling, I thought this would be a great little travel bag um, to pull out, like bag in a bag. You can have this in something else and then your grab and go option. But this is a great little purse here. First of all, it has this strap that is adjustable. And let's see, I don't have any of these. This is my first one, so. Let's adjust it all the way out. It is a little bit tighter slide on here, so the adjustment is just a little bit more, I don't wanna say difficult, but it doesn't slide through quite as easily as the nice big one that has a loose fitting. But it adjusts the same way. So let's just go all the way to the end here and see what it gives us. Okay. Oh, and interestingly, all right, so this one is mounted on the back rather than the sides. I think that's fine, it makes sense. For me, I like mine a little low. So this for me is not quite as low as I would like, because I just, I do, I like it low. But that's right at my, my hip bone is right there. So it is satisfactory for me. And it's a great little size. So you have on the front, you have a slip here, which isn't very wide, but you could put, you know, pens or maybe your key or keys if you have just a couple of keys. I'm gonna put my phone in this back slip. So the back slip part goes all the way across and then this part is just this section here. So nice crisscross coordinating trim there. It's kind of nice. You, you can also use like your zip ID and put that in there, very nice fit. And then you know, either put the tag up or tag down, but that's great. Inside the main pouch, you have just a pouch. Interestingly, it has um, no lining on this side, it's just quilted. And then on the back side, there is a lining there. It's just a, uh, it's not, pla it's kind of like their lining for their cosmetics. It's kind of plasticky nylon cross, but yeah, so there's that. Then you have two zipper pockets on the back. So it's kind of like a triple zip hipster in a mini form. You have the top zipper, your second zipper, and this pocket goes all the way to the bottom. And it is that white wipeable on both sides. So you could also put your phone there, but obviously it sticks out. Your zip ID fits very nicely in there and you can tuck in the strap as well. So you can use that pocket for that, which I'm quite sure I will. Um, yeah, and that keeps the inside free for, you know, your chapstick, your mask, your hand sanitizer, whatever. And then the bottom pocket is kind of the reverse of the inside. So the one side has just the material and then the back side has the, the lining there. So it looks like they just used that white part for the extra layers. That's fine. It doesn't matter to me either way. But it has that nice coordinating trim on that side as well. So this bag, you can put facing either direction and it would be very stylish. Obviously your pattern placement is random. So you may get a intact medallion perfectly centered on your bag or you may get any variation thereof. That's normal. But I did call their amazing customer service at Stephanie Dawn, and they are truly great. I'll put the info down below, but if you have any problems ordering, if you have any questions, they're really great about it. I call them occasionally with questions. Um, like one question, they do not have a military discount, not because they don't want to, but we're trying to figure out 
uh, what's the best way for them to do it so that may or may not happen in the future but that is one question I asked also um, I didn't have any problems ordering but I did have a coupon that didn't work so I just tried it again later and, and it worked um, what else did I call them about oh I called and asked about pattern placements because uh, you know I, I was looking at the mosaic and I thought the picture online had this perfect medallion I thought well I know that it's a grab bag you get what you get but some companies sometimes will let you call in and say hey I prefer you know this portion of the pattern can I can you look at what's on the shelf and grab one that most closely resembles that particular piece um, you know most of the Stephanie Dawn patterns that I've seen are pretty geometric so you know yeah but anyway I wanted maybe to try and grab an intact medallion on a small piece like this yeah anyways nope <laughs> no help and that's okay I don't have an issue with that but I figured uh, it would be worth asking and I got my answer so that's okay but um, if you want to get some Stephanie Dawn even before the um, online outlet sale I have a new discount code for you it's WP like Warthog Princess 3 because this is my third code my third haul video for them and then uh, SD for Stephanie Dawn 21 for 2021 and 15 for 15% so WP3 SD 2115 and I'll put that in the remarks down below as well and I get nothing for that so you can you know get your good deal with the coupon that comes with your orders 15% same 15% you could use my code to get 15% you don't have to wait to order um, and you know they randomly send out other coupon codes as well but like I said I don't really get anything for it it's just a way of tracking if this affiliate relationship is sending them any business so maybe something will come of it in the future but um, that's not what I'm doing it for I'm just sharing my bags that I buy for me because I want them and I like them or I don't and you get just honest feedback like you do every day all the time anyways so no change to any of that um, but I love, love, love that they are made in the USA, so I'm doing my part to maybe help to bring up their business a bit. Um, yeah, because I believe in that. So thanks for watching. Hope you're having a great weekend and it gets even better from here. Bye for now.